everybody. Welcome, and thank you for coming and hanging with the Pod Rats. I'm Brayden. Today I'm joined by Christian, Hunter, and Alex. And in this episode, we will be discussing episode 5 of The House of the Dragon. But before we get into our review, you can go ahead and follow us on our socials on Twitter at the underscore Pod Rats, on Instagram at the Pod Rats. You can also listen to these episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Amazon Music, and watch us on YouTube. Uh, the links for all that fun stuff will be in the description of wherever you're watching this. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get into our review of this week's episode, We Light the Way. The king will die, and if Rhaenyra succeeds him, war will follow. Prepare Aegon to rule. This episode follows the aftermath of all the stuff that was going down in episode four. Uh, a lot of horniness still going on. People uh -huh. getting married. People getting killed. Uh -huh. A lot of spicy lines are being drawn. T rivalries are being formed. And teams are being put together. So we get to see Lady Rhea for the first time. And only time, it seems, sadly. Yeah. Yeah, we did meet her. Those were some of the pretty shots of the whole episode, in my opinion, was her riding on horseback through the veil. They were pretty nice. Ireland's a pretty place. Yeah, I, I think that's to, where that was. I was about to say, those were like on location, and you could tell. Yeah. Because they were very pretty. But she didn't seem so bad. I don't know why Damon hated her so much. She was too spicy for him, man. She was too much of a her own woman. Yeah, she actually had a, a free will, and she stuck up for herself, which was a little <laughs> too much. And no platinum blonde hair. Yeah, that's also true. That's the main kicker for Damon. Yeah, exactly. Do you think he planned that whole... There's no way he could have just made that horse. Not exactly like that, I don't think. I don't think that's what he planned on doing. I think it just happened. He was like, oh, okay. Well, this has worked out pretty nicely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll roll with it. <laughs> but yeah, she, she comes and goes. Rest in peace, Lady Rhea. I thought she would have a much bigger role this episode after shots came out of her earlier in the week on Twitter. But. Yeah, I didn't expect her to go out in the only scene she was in in the whole show. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, wow. I also saw pictures of her on like social media, and I was like, "Oh, is this supposed to be a new character who is recurring?" And then when she when she fell off the horse in the like very beginning of the episode, I kind of just I don't know. I thought she was just gonna be like crippled for the rest of the show, <laughs> but you know, that lasted about five minutes. So. Well, once again, she made the joke that uh, Damon can't finish. Yeah, she did, in fact, make the you can't finish joke. She watched last week's episode. Yes. In episode one. And I think that is just what set Damon off, man. Man, his D, his ED is just known yeah, he's, throughout the lands. He's got some male performance problems. I think it really gets to him, especially because he's so used to being in control, you know? Yeah. He's a control freak, and he can't even control himself. Mm. Wow. Wow, deep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's some good insight right there. We also get our first look at Driftmark, I believe. Yeah, the yeah. The outside of Driftmark anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was cool. I I had to ask. I was I don't even know what I was doing, but I didn't see the whole like roll up to Driftmark. So I was really confused. I was like, where the fuck is this place? That castle was pretty sick. It was. It was the really inside cool. was very nice, very nice. Did you miss Viserys throwing up on the side of the boat? Yeah, he well, did. Do I, I didn't miss that. I just didn't no. put two and two together. Viserys but. continues to be going through it with his yeah. illnesses. Yeah, he does. Maybe he just got seasick. I mean, that's what I thought at first, but but then he realizes he's you know slowly dying a painful death. Then he walks the into he walks into Driftmark and he's just coughing up a storm. Dude, and, I felt so bad for him. I thought back to like when I would like when you're having a conversation with somebody and you got a cough. And you're just coughing nonstop, and then you like feel like the you know the other person is just like, damn, why is this man coughing so much? <laughs> Literally, you're having a, the most important conversation in the realm right now with Corliss, and then you're just going <coughs> in between fucking sentences. Yeah, I felt so bad for him. Terrible. <laughs> it makes it even worse when your cousin who hasn't seen you in a while is like, man, he's coughing a lot, and then goes to shake your hand, and is like, oh, he's missing two oh, fingers. Oh yeah, sorry, that's the wrong hand. <laughs> It's like, oh, I didn't know that was happening. Yeah. Rainies didn't seem too upset about it, though. No. no. She is truly a schemer. She's always got that same smirk on her face. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she's always in the background, 
every time he makes a comment about a woman being queen, she's always smirking back there. Yeah, I think she's very bitter, and she just always seems like she's plotting something. Yeah. Uh, now what she's plotting, I have no idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. kind of a pussy, in my opinion. Dude. But all right. That's messed Stray's up. Stray's throwing it, getting yeah, thrown at Lanor. Do? That's messed up. I don't know, man. He's got sea smoke, but... He does, in fact, have sea smoke, which is just kind of odd. But I do like some sea smoke. But he's also having sex with the Kingsguard guy for the Valerions. So he might actually be good at hand-to-hand combat if they have trained together. Yeah, we learned Lenor likes... uh, He likes guys. He does. Joffrey... I forget his last name, but his first name's Joffrey. He's another Joffrey. The well, Knight of Kisses. Joffrey's Dude, that's a sick name. Damn. Kisses. Huh? Yeah, yeah. He mentioned that, and I was like, dude, that's pretty sick. And then he didn't he say something like, I don't know why? Yeah, he's like, I don't know why they call me that, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Knight of Kisses. That's awesome. So, Rhaenyra and Lenore got to meet for the first time in this episode. That really was their first time meeting, wasn't it? Walking on a beach. So far on the show, it's sounded like they've met each other before. Yeah, I think yeah, because didn't they like grow up together? Something oh, like that. Yeah, yeah. They are cousins. Say that. But first time in the show that yeah, they did meet each other. Yeah. Yeah, I did talk about how they grew up together. And that's why that their long walk on the beach. They kind of did they they kind of do talk like that childhood friend dynamic. Where it's like it's not awkward, but it's just like, damn, this is kind of weird. Cause like you my little bro bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with little bro bro? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just think about her Nira saying that. That's all. Well, it's Ray Ray talking about her bro bro. Yeah, Ray 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 about her bro bro. What's wrong with that? Just Ray Ray talking to her bro bro about <laughs> gooses and ducks. But they did come to a mutual agreement. So. Yeah, I wonder how much of a secret Lenor's... Um, Appetite is yeah. according to dude. He was not keeping it very secret. Like when I think back yeah. to um, Renly and like how secretive he kept his relationship versus mm. mm-hmm. um, Lenor. Like it's obvious. I mean, he's looking at him all the time. He's got him literally. I mean, he had him like wrapped around his arm when he walked in the room. Yeah, like later in the, in the episode yeah. too. They're like all really close. Yeah, I thought that too. I thought it's it is far more like obvious with him. And I don't know. I don't feel like he really feels the need to hide it, honestly. I think more so his parents are just the ones that are trying to, you know, not believe it. But I don't really think he cares that much about it because, yeah, like towards the end of the episode when the wedding is happening, you know, they were dancing each other, dancing with each other and stuff. And they were like all over each other. And I really the bottom line is as long as he has a kid, no one really cares. Yeah, exactly. Fulfill your male duties and then hey call the day and you're good you can move on see and Rhaenyra was feeling the same way because she wanted to you know keep her thing going with Sir Kristen but he was uh wanting her to do a little too much I think and he didn't want to be her whore I guess yeah he's he's a he's quite the emo guy right now they're going through a little rocky spot in the relationship kind of feel for the man you know He's, he's kind of just seems like a blind romantic, hopeless romantic. But, hey, she's got to fulfill her queenly duties the same as Lane has to fulfill his. So Yeah, yeah, we talked about it uh, before in other episodes, but Kristen doesn't really understand how things go about. Mm-hmm. Like when he was talking to Rhaenyra in the Kingswood about, well, they're just going to have to understand that you're queen and they can't do anything about it. Yeah. And he was just reassuring Rhaenyra, but that was that's honestly the wrong advice. Uh, she has to know that people aren't going to like her as queen. And then now he's giving this whole spiel to Rhaenyra about, well, why don't they just go and leave and go to Essos? But things aren't just aren't as simple as that. And he just I just don't feel he understands all the politics of Westeros and what goes on in King's Landing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is truly a himbo. He is very, very handsome and he has that going for him and you know he's a very brawny guy but yeah it seems that he is quite literally clueless about all the the politics and stuff mostly the politics of it because he feels like he has somewhat of a grasp when you know like 
the power that comes along with being queen or king. But I don't think he really grasps the politics that go on behind the scenes because, you know, he's obviously never really been enveloped in that. And now that he kind of has this little affair, if you can even call it that, going with Ray Ray. Yeah, he's kind of being thrown into this world that he doesn't really have a grasp on. And he's being forced very quickly to understand how it works. Even to like skip ahead a little bit, when Allison asks him to come into her room, he just like ad- openly admits to something that she never even <laughs> stated out loud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No. But I mean, from his perspective, he didn't know that Rhaenyra did anything else that night except with him. I mean, you have to assume if you're Kristen that that's the only thing that she did. Like, why would she do anything else? Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, I don't even think he like he was almost like proud of it and he owned it because he is that like hopeless romantic. He's like very proud of, yes, this is my woman and I will not back down from it. So he was like willing to go out on a sword and shield for it. Yeah. Literally. He's like, just make it a merciful death. Yeah. Cause Hey, he can't help the woman he loves. But I don't think that Allison's the type of queen who's going to just murder him. And I mean, we yeah. kind of we see that in the end of the episode when he's trying to you know put the knife to himself. She comes in and this kind of stops him. Mm-hmm. But and I think she does does still have that soft spot for Rhaenyra. But yet again, because she is so enveloped in the politics of being queen right now, she has to kind of balance that that relationship with Rhaenyra while also balancing the politics that come along with her position. So I think that goes into a lot of it with how she dealt with it and how she will be dealing with it because she does feel for Rhaenyra, you know, and with liking this guy and having this relationship with him. But she also knows that is not allowed and not possible. Allison has the biggest of biggest decisions of anybody to make right now. She's got the most information, I feel like, and she's in the most powerful spot and she could really wreck some lives with Mm. the knowledge she's got right now and her dad Otto is like pushing her to pick a side Mm -hmm. as well yeah yeah Yeah, she's in a tough spot she is kind of straddling the fences right now she Mm -hmm. kind of goes both ways it feels like in the episodes and like some episodes i'm like man she's truly is like the queen you know but then sometimes i'm like oh she kind of does still have this soft spot for the people that she grew up with so i think it'll be kind of interesting to see you know if she does kind of snap and kind of leans into that position. So, yeah. How did we feel about her conversation with Laris strong, the old cripple cane man? Laris is a little backstabber, man. He's, he's playing, uh, on auto side on this. I feel like mm-hmm. playing on the, the side of war. He, he might be another, stir, like stir li- the pot. He might be, yeah, he might be another like little finger character. He just wants chaos. Yeah, that's the vibes that I got from him too. Is he seems like another little finger where he's very involved in everything behind the scenes and he kind of makes it seem like he's on your side and he's empathetic, but he only cares about himself. Right. And, and I suppose his brothers. He is Lionel's kid. So do you think that Lionel has anything to do with the deception here? I think so. Okay. Because we I was talking about it before the podcast started, but I don't know. I think Lionel is like because they keep talking about how he's so perfect for the position of like being hand and stuff. I feel like being hand deception kind of comes along with it. And I don't know. He kind of has been rubbing me the wrong way these last two episodes every time it shows him because I I remember that, you know, his family that he has going for him and also his Who's Harwin? Is that his brother? Mm-hmm. Harwin's his son. son. Harwin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Harwin has also like rubbed me the wrong way, especially towards the end of this episode. I don't know. Just how was it? Do you remember when Lionel kind of gave the motion to Harwin and then Harwin ran in and there was a glance. Him? There was a hard glance yeah. there. That was like that, right, that, that glance. I don't her. know. It kind of rubbed me the wrong way because he looked over at Harwin and he gave him the little the head nod to run and get Rhaenyra. And it was just kind of weird. Like, how does that head nod indicate, yeah, yeah, yeah. go grab her? Like, like they, they, I don't know. I feel like they've got something going on <laughs> behind the scenes, and especially because Laris is involved, too. I think there's something big going on there. Yeah, yeah, it's probably a case of with Lionel being the hand and his sons are his two, they'll navigate in two different areas. 
and work as a team and his yep. sons will give give him information and stuff and the uh-huh. last time we saw Laris was in episode two um and he went and sat with all the women that uh-huh. were gossiping yeah and he kind of played the sympathy role of well i can't fight so i'm gonna come sit with you guys mm-hmm. i'm just gonna sit here and, and listen you know at the time i was like oh that's kind of sad but yeah no i think it he's playing a political game and he's kind of getting in on the the women because the women in the game of thrones universe are you know kind of the gossipers and he's getting in and seeing what they're saying and also the dynamic that he has with him being laris and being being this you know feeble character who's very very dialogue oriented and very very you know deceptive it seems and then the dynamic that he has with harwin who i don't think they've ever been called him breakbones but that on the hbo cast website his name's harwin breakbone strong and the dynamic that he has there with Harwin seemingly being the like brawn behind enforcer, the operation. Yeah. The enforcer dynamic. So they kind of have all bases covered, it mm-hmm. seems, with just the three of them. And then you have Lionel, who is the mastermind behind all of it. That being said, he still does give Viserys good advice. Yeah, he does. I think he's a pretty smart dude at the end of the day. So and I think he also tells Viserys what it seems like he wants to hear. Yeah, he definitely does. And I think that that's something that if he is trying to deceive Viserys, he does a lot better of a job at it than Otto did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Otto is also very smart, but I think Otto towards the end, Viserys kind of realized what was happening and what happens when you become hand of just, you know, you kind of get that power, that drunk on power feeling where you kind of start trying to manipulate the cards in your favor. Mm-hmm. And I think Viserys towards the end saw through that with Otto. And right now he's kind of just in like the honeymoon phase, I guess, with Lionel, if that makes sense. Yep. And he's like, wow, this guy is perfect for the job. Yeah. Well, even with Otto, we get a little bit more insight into what exactly was motivating him to push Aegon to be heir so hard with Alicent in that small little scene. It's just as he's afraid, he's afraid of his grandson being killed, were Viserys to die and then Rhaenyra become the queen and have no choice but to kill Aegon. So it does make Otto's motives maybe a little bit more sympathetic to some people. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is completely understandable. It does make sense. He he does have a good point, but this is a show about the Targaryens. So I'm not going to cheer for Otto Hightower. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Good point. <laughs> yeah, but it makes sense because it seems like Otto wasn't trying to be so deceptive as just trying to be more influential. I push really hard. For I them. have no doubt that Otto and the High Towers are the better people here, but I don't know, man. You just can't cheer for them. You, no matter how uh, morally right they are in comparison. Do you guys want to talk about the wedding? That did, in fact, happen. Someone's always got to die at a wedding, man. Yeah, Game of Thrones weddings don't really go well. We should have known. We should have known. If there's a wedding and they're going to show it, somebody's going to die. Yeah. It's Somebody very, did die. It's very strange that Kristen made the choice to do that at that time in front of everybody. I just, yeah. he was just going through a lot of emotions. You yeah. know, I want, I want to backtrack a little bit. When Allison walks into the room, that, that was when I really felt the impact of like the high towers wanting to go to war. Yeah, that was pretty like, sick. And then you hear, um, the high priest talks to Allison and says that they're on the high tower side or that, you know. Yeah. He gives us a little exposition yeah. of, Hey, this is what this means when she wears green. Mm-hmm. Because there was that, the, the big old shot where they heavily emphasized because in this wedding of drab color palettes, and then she walks in with that jade green dress and you go, Oh, she is wearing green immediately. And then they immediately explain why she is wearing green. But yeah, I think Allison has a... Yeah, I think she feels betrayed since Uh Rhaenyra lied to her and, you know, did have sex. And now it's like, (laughs) you know, Otto was right in a way, even if it wasn't Damon, that Rhaenyra was still tainted and they still, you know, kicked her dad out Mm -hmm. from hand. So I think she's, she's coming back with a vengeance, man. Yeah, just like how we were talking about earlier with Allison needing to pick a side, clearly picks a side right there. 
at that point. Yeah, she does. And Rhaenyra also l- continuing to lose allies in a row with Kristen and Alicent. Losing all these allies before she even ascends to the throne. It's she just resulting from her continually taking advantage of people, it seems. Yeah. 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 Rhaenyra truly is kind of playing the Game of Thrones right now. I think that because she's like coming of age and she's realizing all this power that she's already got and she will have. I think that she is kind of taking advantage of a lot of people and kind of just stringing people along. And the repercussions of that are kind of happening in front of us. See, I also got the vibe in this wedding that Kristen is just constantly envious or like he lustful. It's probably the better word towards Rhaenyra. And he just wants to beat the shit out of Lenor. And when Lenor's man, you know, the knight of comes up to him, <laughs> yeah. it starts, you know, kind of getting in his face a little bit. He gets pissed off. And then, I, I mean, I was not expecting the explosion of action that we had, though. Mm-hmm. I was not expecting Kristen to fucking kill him. Rip his face off. Yeah. yeah. You know, and we don't ever, like see what instigated that again because the last shot we see before all that happens is Damon and Rhaenyra dancing together and Damon grabs her face you know being all you know smoochy with her and Mm -hmm. uh and then the shit just breaks loose so like what triggered that for Kristen and we didn't see it but something I don't know if it's something Joffrey did or if maybe he saw Damon and her I don't know. And he kind of felt the need to take his aggression out, yeah. but he knew he couldn't take it out on Damon. I just think at that point, he's just seeing red. He's yeah. just so angry and emotional. And then Joffrey comes up to him and says that he knows their secret. And I think he might view that as a threat and just without thinking, just yeah. reacts and just starts pounding into him and doesn't know when to stop. Yeah. And I think that goes back to like earlier when we were talking about how he kind of is a himbo character and he... Just like very stereotypical manly man. He doesn't really know how to handle his emotions. And I think just seeing, you know, being at the wedding of the girl that he loves and then having Night of the come up to him and, you know, kind of rub it in his face a little bit. It's just the tension just built and built. And then he finally kind of just snapped, I guess, because he had no other way of kind of showing those emotions. And you saw it happened as a result. The other interesting part about this universe is, well, I say this universe, this time frame as compared to Game of Thrones is I feel like in Game of Thrones, there would have been a punishment. And in this, they just are like, damn, <laughs> everybody, kind of, everybody kind of just walks out. <laughs> yeah, like they're, they're just like, like oh, well, okay. well, I think it's that another day. I think that there is, would be a punishment. And I think that he feels that there's going to be, which is kind of why he wants to just go take himself out you mm-hmm. know just because he doesn't want to be tortured or anything and um, he knows he fucked up yeah he knows how bad it was but i don't know that anything's gonna happen to him yeah i don't know i was also kind of thinking that you think he's gonna feel like indebted to allison i think allison is gonna cover his back yeah i, I do too mm-hmm. she'll kind of play the you kind of have to suck up to me now right and sir Kristen, from what we've seen is a good ally to have in combat so Allison might use him for mm-hmm. sure. Beat Damon in hand to hand. He might do it again. Could do it again. Who knows? What do you think the sides of this are going to be? Cause we've got people coming from all angles here. We've got Otto. we've got maybe the strongs, we've got the Valerians. Mm-hmm. And then of course you have, uh, Den- Rhaenyra said so yeah I think the strongs take Rhaenyra's side because they want to be on the side with the dragons in the army I think so too and then you're gonna have Alicent and Kristen Cole and that whole side kind of try and take up arms like on land so it's gonna be like the Driftmark and Targaryens you know the Valerians and Targaryens against everyone else basically because no, nobody's going to support Rhaenyra's crime right. as queen. Yeah. yeah, they have the the biggest weapons, but not as much support from the realm. Like, even if you just think about a certain house, like the Baratheons. The Baratheons were not a fan of Rhaenyra being named heir when in the first episode. Mm-hmm. I think this is going to be another example of dragons keeping the realm in check once again. Yeah, just the iron fist cracking down 
on everyone that opposes. You can't do shit about it, and mm-hmm. they have so many of them. But they do keep multiplying every episode. We'll see. <laughs> Speaking of sides, though, I do think we're going to learn next episode because this is the last episode with Millie Alcock and Emily Carey as Rhaenyra and Alicent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I feel like for that actor change to happen, we're going to – those characters are going to have to be pushing probably 30 at yeah. this point. There's going to be a big to justify jump. that. There's going to be a big So jump. I think I think those sides will probably be more heavily entrenched by next They'll week. They'll kind of be established next right. week. Yeah. yeah. You're probably right. Yeah, because, I mean, the actor change isn't going to happen if they're just moving ahead two or three years. Mm-hmm. They're, yeah, it'll probably be quite the, quite the jump. Because at this point, I believe they are – 18 ish. I don't think much as time, time has passed between this episode and last episode. Yeah. So, yeah. Go check out Millie Alcock's farewell post on her Instagram. Did yeah. she post one? Yeah, she did. Oh, I bet that's, that's really sad. sad. Yeah, it's pretty sad. It's pretty Dang. sad. It's her with like, uh, Emily Carey and stuff. And, uh, and that picture I sent in the discord of her and Kristen Cole. Ah, oh, nice. That sick S- picture. Smoking a cig. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, I think the final thing, the final shot of the episode, um, Rhaenyra and Lenor are now officially married. Yeah, they they had a little sob wedding. They reception. Did. Such a sad <laughs> wedding to have. They're like talking about their vows and they're like, it was, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> it was not the seven day tournament spectacle they were anticipating no, by any means. Quite the opposite. Um, but yeah, and at the end of their vows... Viserys just faints, falls to the floor, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then we get a a cameo in the episode. And we do get a cameo. Our first surprise, surprise! Yeah, we've yeah. actually big big news here. We've actually been in cahoots with HBO recently, <laughs> and they've seen our work, and they're big fans, and they wanted to kind of thank us. So they actually gave us any option we wanted of being in the episode, and instead of doing, you know an actual face-to-face cameo we decided that that would be kind of the better route to take so yeah we just wanted to be a rat at the end licking up the blood yeah of joffrey so yeah and like obviously there's huge symbolism there but who cares because you know it, it's just a pod rat so exactly yeah yeah rat he's a rat yeah, yeah he's a rat and like we're the pod rats so yeah that's why it makes sense mm-hmm it actually foreshadows what's going to happen in the next episode. So if you guys can dissect yep, and yep. leave, you know, in the comments and tell us, you know, what your fan theory is. Yeah. Yeah. We actually know the answer. So yeah. We'll kind of give you some tidbits if you're uh, close. Just for legal reasons. We're not actually sponsored by it. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a pod rat flying on a dragon next week, though, you know, it was us. Yeah. Yeah. They listened. Well, I think that about wraps up our episode five review of House of the Dragon. Um, we're still really enjoying this show. Uh, we're enjoying doing these every week. I think that it was a great move doing TV shows. Yeah, we've turned into a TV podcast. Yeah. <laughs> with that being said, we'll be back next week with episode six of House of the Dragon. Until then, put yourself first and take care of each other. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye guys. See you.